Hello, and welcome to another video. Um, this one I'm going to show you Crypto Prevent version 2.0.1. And I'm up to 2.0.1. I, I just released 2.0 last night, and then it, uh, I discovered a bug which actually prevented the new whitelisting functionality from working properly that I introduced supposedly in 2.0. So if you have 2.0, get 2.0.1. Um, and if you have an earlier version, get 2.0.1. Um, while the protection is still the same, the whitelisting uh, capabilities are nice to have. So what I've got here is um, essentially uh, first option is app data and local app data. We always want to choose this option. Um, this will apply protection to the app data and the local app data folders and their first level subdirectories. Um, this will, of course, prevent any executables from running uh, from those directories. Next, we have temporary extracted EXEs, which will apply protection against um, extracted executables from archive files. And then finally, our last option, our newest option, is whitelist EXEs already located in app data and local app data. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to go through and find all of your executables in uh, app data and local app data and their first level subfolders that are currently there and whitelist those. So obviously you don't want to do it on an infected machine, but you definitely want to do it on a good machine because there are legitimate executables that could be running from those folders. So we want those whitelisted. So I'll just start by running the test feature. And it, as you can see, uh, prevention is not applied. So I'm just going to hit block and we'll restart the PC. And when I restart, I will um, take you through and show you what happens when we, when we try to uh, uh, run an executable from one of these folders. Okay. Just run pr crypto event one more time. And as you can see, um, prevention is successfully applied. What actually happens is crypto event um, runs, uh, extracts a temporary executable to app data to perform the test. And if that temporary executable is um, in app data and is able to run, then we know the test failed. Um, if that uh, temporary executable is not able to run, then we know that the test succeeded and the, um, the prevention is successfully applied. Now you can see I already have an executable in here. It's actually a copy of Crypto Prevent. Um, what has happened was when I chose whitelist EXEs already located in app data, local app data, you'll notice if I go to my whitelist options, I do have Crypto Prevent whitelisted there. So I can in fact run it. You see my UAC prompt. I can I can definitely run the app from this folder if I want to. However, if I copy another app here and try to run it of any other name, I get this program is blocked by group policy, um, and that's the type of protection that this uh, app adds. It will block anything that's not whitelisted there. And as you can see, the program runs a hello world. That's all that this does is hello, runs a hello world. And you can copy this to a first level subfolder and it's still blocked. Copy it any deeper than that and it can run. So that's where we apply the protection. I don't need that there either. Um, now if I were to remove, if you want to remove the whitelisting, all you have to do is select all and de-whitelist um, or select whatever you want. Now if I have a specific app in there, say I want hello, if I want to whitelist that app, you can browse, select the app, hit whitelist, and you see now it appears in the whitelist checks. Unfortunately, a reboot is required before whitelisting will take effect. So I'll go ahead and do that reboot now. Now that we've rebooted and we're back in Windows, I'll go back to App Data. 
and we should be able to run the hello app now and we do it runs and says hello world but if we rename it to anything else if any malware installs itself there whoops did I just do that yes I did I'm going to rename it to hello1.exe it's now blacklisted again so that is the entire point of crypto prevent its whitelisting and blacklisting functionality um, again the whitelist exe is already located in app data and local app data um, this is the same as using this button here and I think that's about oh let's show you one more thing um, I have crypto prevent test CLI and I'll show you that from a command prompt um, all that does all that does is um, tell you if the prevention is successfully applied or if it is not applied um, it gives you the exact same message you get through the test button in the GUI interface um, and it returns an error level of zero if the protection is successfully applied and an error level of one if it is not successfully applied um, that is for your scripters who may want to script uh, crypto prevent test CLI in order to test for the protection now unfortunately some people are doing that via their RMM tool and the RMM tool is running that app in the under the local system account anytime you run anything under the local system account it will bypass file system permissions registry permissions and of course any blocks via group policy so the test will always fail if you run it through the local system account and it will be inaccurate so don't do that you have to run it as a standard user or administrator and now I believe that's all I have to show oh one more thing I also have crypto prevent set up I'll just install that that launches crypto prevent just installs it on the machine gives it uninstall support one thing to note it does install under foolish IT crypto prevent if you uninstall crypto prevent it will remove the protection so leave it installed if you do the install and you want it to to keep protecting your computer leave it installed otherwise it will remove that protection um, and uh, the the whole intent for the installer is so that you have it at your fingertips in case you need to uh, whitelist any other items in the future anyway I hope this has been an informative video and if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos just give me a holler